been locked into. And it's also going to be that information game. Some hated surging strikes. Yeah. It's time to stop deliberating and see what the trainers are thinking, though. Hop into our first top four match here in Honolulu. And we're getting the same mindset with the Whimsicott, but partners of choice. For Zongjie, that's going to be Maridon and Luca bringing out the Ogre Pond. Yeah, it's a nice lead here from both trainers, kind of scouting out what each other are going to do. We've got the Whimsicott's coming out into the field of peace, so we've got that tailwind that could be active here. There's not really anything to tell with speed tiering yet between the Whimsicott's, but maybe we get to see that if both lock in. Not going to see it, though. Luca just taking it straight out of the fray. That's going to be his own Maridon brought in to the battle. I mean, you got the electric drain. It's already out there. We got dual restricted. Spiky shield, not wanting to take any damage on this turn. So Song they did want to try and go for a Volt Switch or a devastating attack. We'll have to see. Speed going to be on Song Jay's and then Draco Meteor. It targeted right into who that could have been close that could have been a delete button <laughs> if you targeted into that Maridon. yeah definitely and that was very risky because if you go into the other slot i mean you're not gonna but if you predict the whimsicott to go out that could have been really bad for luca thankfully not the case now the Maridon is switching out here you've got to say that songji has got that tailwind in effect uh, but the Maridon on luca's end is putting a little bit of pressure onto the opposing Maridon, of course because of this that's rationalization there you don't want to lock into the draco meteor on luca's side in case that is what happens and that is exactly what we're going to see to have that alleviation against that potential Draco Media that now is a hot flame ogre pond. <laughs> hey, you're covered if it wasn't, right? That's going to be the light, street, light screen as well. Really validating the setup on Song Jae's end of things. You got the speed, you have that light screen, and Luca has the option to set that later to kind of stagger these turns. Dazzling Gleam to bring Wimscott down to about half. Follow up, that's a lot of damage into the Ogre Pond, but isn't going to fall it. What I'm looking at, though, is if Luca can get rid of the Whimsicott and then maybe set his own tailwind after, he'll be able to win that speed war in the end, and that could give a huge advantage, advantage position in this mirror. Yeah, it's a really good call there, Sierra, because I think that's what you want to do. You want to let your opponent's tailwind pitter out and then set your own up, and then you're in that commanding position. Especially because you all have already committed to that terrestrialization on the Maridon. Maybe that's something that you would always look to do in this mirror so you avoid that uh, co conflict between the Draco Media damage that you would be looking at. So, Dazzling Gleam coming out looks like it's going to be in a nice position here for Luca to clear something off the field. Ogre Pond, the center of attention. So, no attempt at being able to target into the Maridon and taking this first hit so well. Follow up, Ivy Ajul. We saw how much we did on one side. And now we know that Stogerbon ain't going down. Is another round of Dazzling Gleam. Whimsicott hanging on for this turn. Ogrepon's gonna fall. Yeah, it's a big survival here from the Whimsicott. You can see how useful that light screen is that the Whimsicott has set up, taking those attacking moves a little bit better. Now, you've got an option here. The, the Ogrepon has gone down. The Maridon coming onto the field. And you would say that Songje's Maridon is gonna be susceptible to these Dazzling Gleams, right? But the one thing he could do is potentially go for that terrestrialization. You do become weak to the Ivy Kudjo, but you then could lock into something like that Electro Drift that does take advantage of the Electro Train. And now, because the Maridon is a fairy type, it's gonna be hit for mutual damage from that big, powerful Electro type attack. There is still, with that survival, one more turn of follow me to make sure if you are attempting to go for a single target attack, like Electro Drift, it can be redirected as, of course, not surprised to see this locked in. With the Dazzling Gleam pressure on the other end, you want to make sure you are dropping that weakness as soon as possible. Ogre Pond, yet again, keeping the partner restricted safe. It's going to be the Electro Drift time. Doesn't need to do much. And that is going to be Ogre Pond cleared off of the board. Yeah, big knockout here. Just taking that kind of support option away and allowing Song Jade the room to go for that Maridon the next turn, following up with a Moonblast here into the Maridon. Might not be doing super effective damage, but you're fishing for that drop, and it's exactly what Songjae gets, reducing that special attack. Gonna be a huge play in the next turn where this Dazzling Gleam's out on his side of the field. Your damage is slowly going down here, but as the Whimsicott also falls, and the Tailwind with it, what you lack in maybe some of that damage, you can make up for it with the speed on your own end, is now your Whimsicott is gonna be the only one that matters and the ability to set the speed on your end. If maybe you can even go for a pivot out, you would have to go for a manual one, you're locked into that move, it could be a great choice. Now, Iron Hands, that is gonna be the final Pokemon in this situation, and with Trasalization already spent, it's not gonna appreciate the Dazzling Gleams either, even if there is 
that special attack drop. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's why we're going to see Luca kind of switch out the Maraidon as well. So it can refocus later on in this game. While the Whimsicott on Luca's side is going to set that tailwind up, get the speed advantage, which is going to be so important later on in this game. And Iron Hands coming in on the field, which is a nice, safe thing to bring in, right? You know that the Maraidon on Songji's side is locked into that Electro Drift. You've got a great Pokemon to come in and just sponge that attack up if it is into this slot. So much going for you in the speed as well. Electro Drift targeted into the Iron Hands. Resist, not very effective. Assault Vest doesn't even take half damage. Heavy Slam into the Whimsicott as well. That one will be doing significantly more. One hit KO, but you set the Tailwind. Things looking kind of okay. And your Maradon can now hit the field as well as that Faco Pressure that you brought along with it. Yeah, all the quark drives. Wearing off there, the electric terrain are wearing off, but we're gonna start it all back up again as this Maraidon comes back onto the field to launch the electric terrain back up, activate those cork drives on both the iron hands here, and now Luca has the option to lock into something else other than the Dazzling Gleam. Got rid of that drop as well from that Moonblast earlier and has the Tailwind in effect. So now in that advantageous position where he will be able to guarantee that he hits first. One turn of that light screen left, can you get through it? You've got an active fake out this turn, you could launch it into the Maridon pretty freely, but you do have to worry about that Iron Hands. It has taken an attack boost on Songjie's side of the field. As well, with that move of choice, we'll have to see what it wants to lock into, because sometimes it can't necessarily do the most into these Maridons. It will be surviving the hit thanks to that light screen, but how much can it do in return? Low kick, oh. not even going for it. That's going to be hitting into the Iron Hands instead to bring Luka down to final Pokemon. That is a huge knockout there. The light screen going away, and now that Tailwind's still in effect. Dazzling game for Luca. Looks like it's going to lock up this first game in this fast-paced back-and-forth game between the Maraidon, the Iron Hands, the Whimsicott, and these Ogapons. It might be a 1v2 situation, but the previous turns all bringing it down to being in this situation. This Dazzling Gleam that you can fire out. Choice Specs boosted. You have your full special attack back. And you got that Tailwind. The differences we've got to see from these trainers, those tiny little minute things, and setting up for this late game as we get it locked in. Two Pokemon for Zhangjie down to zero, as it's going to be Luka to claim the first game in our set. Wow, what a first game for us to come into this top four with. And you can see both players had the same exact idea, right? I think that Luka was just a little maybe step behind Songje in setting up that Tailwind, which you identified throughout that match would be quite important in the late game. If you can get through those initial tailwind turns of your opponent, remove that Whimsicott as well, remove that speed control, and then set yours up at a more preferable time, you are going to be in that really great advantage position where exactly what we saw Luca do in that end game, close it up with that Dazzling Gleam. You can see some replays here at calling that Draco Meteor, scouting it out turn one was so key and allowing the Ogapon just to be able to stick around on the field and maybe then force the Maraidon out from Songjie's side, which was enough room then for Luca to kind of pivot around the field. And when you even go back to the very first turn of the match where we got to see that Songjie went for this tailwind and Luca went for the swap, it's also a tough situation because we're talking about making those plays. If Luca did want to try and match tailwind on that turn and offered a lot of pressure, well, then you kind of feel you might be forced to be matching. And then all of a sudden he doesn't and you find yourself kind of behind because your Whimsicott doesn't have the opportunity to protect. And there is a lot of damage output when you have the Maradon hitting the field. It's anything that wants swaps into that slot. And unfortunately, as your Tailwind withers away, so does your chances of winning the match with Luca being able to set that Tailwind, get the speed. And even when it was just the Maradon up against the final two Pokemon, the Dazzling Gleams, slow but sure damage to close it out. Yeah, and it comes back to what you kind of said at the top of this match, where both players aren't going to want to really commit or take the risk on those 50-50s. I think if you look at Songjie's kind of a approach to this match they kind of went in where they were like okay i'm gonna get the tailwind up before my opponent and i'm gonna try and get as much of an advantage early on get some returns early on and that might put me so far ahead in the match where later on in the game there's not enough room for luca to kind of come back but luca was really calm and composed throughout that knew exactly what he needed to do at the right time got fortunate with those switches and protects when he needed them but it really paid off but back into game two here we are we're going to see a bit of a change up Luca going all in for the speed, but Iron Hands and Furograph 
spell. I don't want to play that game anymore and want to take and slow this down to just a little bit. There's the potential of a trick room here, of course. There is a potential of a good amount of damage, but leading it next to the Iron Hands means you can go ahead and fake out that Maridon and make sure it can't be damaging you this turn and make sure that you are ahead and no Tailwind can get set. Yeah, I mean, the Tailwind, you probably don't want to set in front of a Trick Room user anyway. I think that's a really good deterrent in the first place. But the, the Iron Hands is going to be a bit of a threat to the Maraidon, of course, because I think the, the Law Kick could be something that you don't want to necessarily take. And do you want to commit to that Terrestrialization early on in this match? Maybe not. You might want to try and get some damage off into the Ferrigraph, but at the cost of doing that, you can take a fake out like we're seeing the Maraidon just be flinched this turn. No choice specs, no protect. And now Trick Room is going to be the way we're playing this match. Luca having swapped out that Whimsicott into the Iron Hands does mean that he has a slower Pokemon that he can try and fire off attacks with. Though notably because of the Armor Tail onto the Furigraph, can't go for Faco to try and slowly make it through that sort of way. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't take advantage of your your fake out now that you've got the Iron Hands on the field. When normal situation, you'd be like, okay, well, you can fake out. You can get at least maybe a terrestrialization from your ride on, try and get some useful dazzling gleam damage off. But you're not going to be able to do that this turn. You're going to have to go off straight on the offensive with your Iron Hands. And you've got some good options here. You've got the electric train set up. You're going to be able to launch out a wild charge. That'll do a good amount of damage into that photograph. But you've got to remember that that electric seed has been activated. So it's the fences bigger than it would be normally. Why are we not seeing anything committed into that slot? Just a low kick here and a heavy slam coming out into the Maraidon. Not very dim, effective damage. That Maraidon is big, it is furious. And maybe the dimensions might be in Sanjay's favor, but the damage output is not. And Iron Hand's gonna be going down this turn. And where I think this can get really dangerous is if you're losing a Pokemon that might be better in the slower dimensions, and you've lost yours and your opponent still has theirs, all of a sudden, maybe you just set up the trick room for Luka. Yeah, and that's the big thing. You can see what uh, Songjae was thinking there with that heavy slam into the Maraidon, thinking, yeah, well, you don't want to take a low kick, so you're probably going to terrestrialize. So I'm going to call that terrestrialization. Heavy slam would have done super effective damage, but Luka not playing into it, just saying, okay, well, I'm going to try and get some damage off. I don't want to really switch around at this point. But like you rightly said, now the trick room's up. Songjae is lost the one thing that would be so impactful in a trick room and Luca's got his and he hasn't set any speed control up so far. The Maraidon coming in is going to be susceptible to maybe a low kick coming out from Luca's end this time around. Because we talk about the Iron Hands being fine in the trick room, but when we still look at the Maraidons in that situation, Luca swaps out, but we still don't know which is faster and which is slower. So it gets a little quirky, gets a little crazy. We won't find out that turn. And so what we find out is where Luca wants to be spending the terrestrialization and it will be on to that Iron Hand means that if we get the Maridon v Maridon later on, that Luka won't be able to drop that Dragon-type weakness. But Sanjay also trasselizing that will be the Maridon into the Fairy-type. Yeah, and the one thing that you would say you've got to watch out for from that Maridon on Sanjay's side of the field is Luka scouting that and going for a wild charge into that slot. We're going to see the helping hand come out from this Ferrigraph here. Well, once we get to the attacking time, that will be a lot of damage. And not just the dragon type dropping the amount of damage you're going to be taking from that low kick is so nice helping hand terra boosted dazzling gleam whimsicott wow. is gone a lot of damage into that iron hands but because of the trasselization gets to stick around yeah that's a big knockout there onto the whimsicott and look at kind of forced in that situation because choosing the trasselization onto the iron hands can no longer do it onto the Maridon. Songjae picking a really nice move to lock into here because, yeah, the Iron Hands is taking that fairy type weakness away. But then, if you're going for the Trasselization there, the Mariadon is susceptible to that. And depending on the speed tiering, we talked about that earlier at the top of the match. If Songjae's Mariadon is actually slower in actual fact than Lucas, in this situation, when the dimensions have been turned, it is going to be able to get a dazzling gleam off before Lucas Maridon is able to move and is in a position where it could potentially get knocked out this turn. And the trick room might be the thing that opens up the door to tie this match up. What's nice about taking down the Whimsicott as well, of course, when you are bringing the Ferrigraph, you did have to leave something at home. So now you know that once the trick room is done, that Luca doesn't have the option to getting the speed in his favor. So you can go from an even matchup from there as we get the confirmation of the final. The swap out from the Maridon in to the Ogre Pond. Preserve it for the time being as the wild charge is going to be the first to ring off not very effective bringing it down to about half and a little bit of recoil for itself 
foul play follow-up normally would be resisted, but instead will take another KO. Yeah, big KO onto the Iron Hands here, and a really important one because normally that foul play would be resisted, but because of that terrestrialization, there's pros to it, but there are cons to it as well. Draco Meteor dropping onto the Ogre Pond and taking that Pokemon down without really much return on such an impactful physical threat from Junks this side of the field. Choosing to lock in to that Draco Meteor as well with the Choice Specs. Reminder, once a Pokemon goes down, you cannot be swapping that out. And when we are facing off against this Viridon with the Fairy type, I mean, that was the call. You took down a Pokemon, but now you will not be able to damage it for the rest of the match. The Ogre Pond is the one that really has to be popping off in this situation. Yeah, and I think you've got to be hoping that the, the Ogre Pond has enough to take down the Maraidon in this Trick Room environment. I believe we're in our last turn of the Trick Room. So once that does shift, the Maraidon on... Sinjo's side of the field is going to be in a position where it's not really threatened by the Maraidon on Lucas' side, and it's going to be able to clean up the Ogre Pond pretty easily. Wood hammer, a lot of damage, and that is going to be enough to take down the Maridon with the Trasalization. It's no longer resisted. And now this Farigaraf, the adjustment for this game too, is the only thing left standing. This Angé, Draco Meteor might be reduced, but it will be enough. 2-0. Luca, we'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely phenomenal here once again from Luca. It looked like it could be quite tricky to close out that end game, but no, he had it all planned out from the start and will be our first finalist into Championship Sunday.